Hello everyone. Today I'm going to uh, show you how to hook up MIDI keyboard control, uh, the digital audio oscillator, and uh, using key velocity control amplitude. And really I'm starting with the basic audio mouse theremin that I did, partly because I want to show you how much this section over here is can really be the basis uh, for so many other things that we can do because you know, we have a changeable os changeable frequency oscillator and control over amplitude. So going to delete all the mouse control objects for this over here and for that you saw us get rid of the frequency and the amp. I'm going to make one slight couple slight changes. Uh, I really like sawtooth waves. Going back to that. Um, so the frequency, the big change I'm going to do over here is instead of the message to line is I'm going to go with pack. And frequency argument and then a time and let's just say 20 milliseconds will be my default target time. By doing this, I can put up a change in how long it takes to go from frequency to frequency. This would be like portamento in standard synthesis. Uh, so I can use that comment. Portamento time. Frequency comes in. And then down here, same thing for amplitude. I can um, delete that and put in the same pack amplitude and how long it takes to change amplitude, let's say 10 milliseconds as a default. But again, it gives me the opportunity to change that ramp time. A little more room here, if I want to. But I have a default built in. Amplitude comes in. So um, let's deal with the MIDI input. And we know some of this already. We've done this. We need a note in if we're going to get information from MIDI keyboard. I just expand it out a little bit. And strip note, if I just want the note on information, from there I can see my MIDI note, middle little C or down an octave, and I can do another object called MIDI frequency. And this is a converter. It's just a lookup table. It takes a MIDI note number and returns the frequency in hertz, so we can see that. And we can send MIDI frequency, MIDI freak. Which means that over here, instead of mouse frequency, I need a new receive mini freak. So you can see the frequency again over here. This is redundant, but uh, now if I play middle C, you see this 261.6 something, and these numbers are actually sending out the same thing. This just doesn't have as much room to display it, so it rounds it if I select it. You can see it's 6.3 instead of 0.625, so I can get as much resolution as I want. But what comes out of the uh, outlet is full resolution of the number. doesn't matter how much you're displaying. But you can see that's coming there. Um, and that's going to change my frequency. I could turn on my audio, and if I give it an amplitude, and... In play, all right. That's all very good. 
what I'm doing. Turn off the audio, but the amplitude is not changing with the key. So I can do one other thing to get my amplitude, and that's to take key velocity. And this is going to give me on and off. So I'll take the key velocity, um, and let's unlock, and I can see it over here. Now, if I see, I mean, I want a two on and zero for off. I can convert that into an amplitude by uh, dividing it. This is the most simple way. It's not the best way for doing amplitude, but it's the most simple. So 127 divided by 127, and I have to add the decimal point to 127 because I want a floating point operation. So 91 divided by 127 gives me an amp of 0.717. Now, what happens if I don't do that with um, the decimal point? If I don't do floating point math, let's get rid of the decimal point. If the argument's an integer, the math is integer math, and integer math is not rounded, it's truncated. So 0 0.661, which should round up to 1, but actually just truncates. You just drop the decimal and you see over here it's zero. Even though this is a floating point number box, the operation is integer based because there is no decimal designation for the argument. It's an integer argument, it's integer math. Floating point argument, floating point math. So we can see why we don't want this. So that's our amplitude. And we can do the same thing before we can send it over here to the basic synthesizer, basic sound generator, send MIDI amp. And receive MIDI amp. And now what should happen had to play one time to clear the amplitude. So it's on, and then off. If I play softer, less amplitude, less volume. Now, like I say, this is not the best way because really the mapping of key velocity to amplitude should be a little more exponential. I should probably scale it with an exponential curve, but this is okay. I don't seem to be able to get slower than a 19 key velocity on. So I can do that. Now the other thing I left in by using pack is that I can change the portamento time of frequency changes and I can change the amplitude, the attack and release. I basically created an attack sustain release envelope with the attack and the release matching. So let's change just the portamento time, the shift between frequencies. Let's do that at maybe uh, 200 milliseconds. Okay, it could go even more. Now a second and a half. And if I drop down an octave, right? Um, and I can do the same thing with amplitude time. Let's let's do a little mapping. Uh, I use my CC Learn object, but I'll do something different for this. Let's uh, say Control in one for the mod wheel. The mod wheel is going to let me scale uh, to a portamento range. Let's go zero to um, 1500, maybe. Uh, let's say just a second. I think a second is enough. And you can see that as a float.
and I can send it as portamento time, port time, and receive it over here. And so now, see it change, none. I need to turn my audio back on. And that's changeable. I could put up something else to deal with um, amplitude, release time, just to make this easy. I want to use control in seven. Oops, mistyped. Control in seven. Just to make sure I'm still getting something. Every keyboard controller has a volume control. This one is not mapped. Okay, so I'm going to say. I've got something on 41. Uh, and let's see. Control number. What can I do? 12. So I can do the same thing. I can scale to how much ramp time I want. And let's say I want it from zero attack time to 2000. And I'll send this as ramp time. And this is not put them into the time down here. Ramp time and receive ramp time. So now short short attack. And if I combine that with a little portamento. And you also know it's it's just picking up where I left off. That's why the ramp's not fading out if I play two notes in succession. Uh, but it's just simple little synthesizer control. And I can save that as basic audio demo, but it's not a mouse theremin anymore. It's MIDI. And put that up. Add a few more comments before I do, and you'll see that up. Uh, in the regular repository for patches. And then we can do some more stuff next time with envelope control, both on the ADSR or with a breakpoint function line generator that can have as many breakpoints as we want. Um, we can create additive sense that have more than one oscillator that can uh, compute frequencies based on a ratio to the fundamental, all these kinds of things. So, but it's just this basic part over here is going to be so much of what we do with any of our synthesis engines. That's it, and goodbye.